In this video, I'm going to show you how you can get Sales Navigator up and running, generating leads for you in less than 10 minutes. No waffling or humble bragging about our results, I'll just get to it and at the end show you some of the new features just released that's really changed the game for Sales Navigator users. So I assume if you're watching this, you've got a license, but I'll give a quick rundown of what you can get with basic versus advanced. Also be aware that you don't get the Sales Navigator platform with a business subscription or premium or recruiter. The key differences between basic and advanced are team link, team collaboration tools, smart links, which are trackable links for engagement, and buyer intent, which comes with its own dashboard, information, and filters. Long story short, buyer intent shows you who is actively looking at you, which is an amazing new feature. It'll help you follow up with the right people, essentially. But for this video, I'm gonna show you the strategy you can use on any Sales Navigator subscription. If you wanna learn more about buyer intent, check out this video that Dean created, and we'll put a link in the description below. So, let's get started. First, you're gonna to need to find your leads. You can't generate leads if you can't find them. That's like cooking a pizza without any ingredients. You'll be staring at the oven, wondering why it's not working. If this is your first time logging on to Sales Navigator, you'll get a lot of prompts to follow and add your target companies. They're called accounts on Sales Navigator, and also there's profiles as well that you can follow. Fill out all that or skip it if you want to get straight to it and you'll land on the home page now it's had a refresh since last year with alerts priority counts and personas and i'll get to these in a bit because those alerts are going to be populated with your leads but first we're going to actually find your leads now this isn't just searching in the top bar for your target audience because there are a number of ways that you can go wrong with this first if you have a space between your keywords at the top essentially you're searching for two separate things searching for managing directors will give you a list of managers and directors or anyone managing any company with past experience content and headlines all smashed together also if you're searching for everyone on the platform without using your filters you'll end up with a lot of people who won't talk to you and even worse you can find your competitors on those lists now i'm going to show you the best way to use sales navigator search for your leads first click onto your searches and simply click enter don't search for anything just click in the box and press enter on your keyboard now you'll have all your filters put in front of you, you can really appreciate how targeted you can get with Sales Navigator. A quick tip to speed up the multiple searches is to pin the most important filters for you. At the top of the filters on the right, you'll see a pin filters button. Click on that icon and click on the pins you want to pin. I recommend you pin company headcount, current job titles and connections to get started. Headcount to make sure you're targeting the right size companies, current job titles to ensure you're after the right people and connections, which I recommend you always set to second degrees. These are the connections of your connections. Firsts are already in your network, and third are essentially strangers, which are harder to prospect. It doesn't mean you can't ever reach these people again, but connecting is a lot easier when they have connections of your connections in common. Working your way up to decision makers through the second degree connections is actually a prospecting strategy we call account mapping, which I'll cover in a future video. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on that one. Now, this is the secret to searching on Sales Navigator and essentially searching for anything online, and it's called the Boolean search. By using quotation marks around your search, you're essentially telling that search engine to search for that specific phrase. There's a lot of searches in this. So remember that mistake earlier when searching for managing directors? If you use quotation marks instead around your search, you will get managing directors, not managing and directors. Spielberg won't be appearing in your searches anymore. Most quotation marks are focusing on that phrase, not just those two words. So your searches are going to be more targeted. The better your search results, the more likely you are to find the right people who want you and your services. And here's the best part, you can also remove certain terms from your searches. All you need to do is add NOT in capitals next to your search and in brackets list out the people you don't want, separating them with OR in capital letters. I'll break it down for you. So at Maverick, we work with business owners, coaches and consultants. So let's search for coaches. In the search bar, I'll write down using Boolean search in quotations, but I don't want LinkedIn coaches in my search because they know it. And if I prospect to them, I'll get a lot of angry DMs telling me that my targeting is off. I'm a terrible salesperson and they'll laugh at me in their pods. So I'll get rid of these people by adding not open brackets, LinkedIn or content or influencers or social media or sales. I don't want any of those people. Now, anyone who is a coach in these fields are taken out of the search and I'm free to prospect to coaches who are not in my space who I can actually help. So try with yourself in your search bar. You can even test the results to see the difference it makes. Now you've got your base search, it's time to use your filters. Head over to your company tab and select your company headcount. If you're targeting larger companies, you'll want to select someone who is higher than 50 employees. If you're targeting SMEs, one to 10 employees. Next, head over to industry and select your target industry. And then select your country in geography because no one wants any 3 a.m. sales meetings. Then go into your current job title section and copy the text from your search and paste it into the section and press enter. 
This will ensure your keywords are in the current job title as well. Now this may slash your search by a lot. So if you're left with only 10 people, don't worry, just leave a section blank because you can over target if you're not careful. Of course, there are only so many cybersecurity managing directors with a thousand employees in Antarctica. Now, this last filter is really important and you can find it under spotlights. Click on the drop down box and select last posted in 30 days. This will make sure that everyone in your search has been active on the platform. Otherwise, you'll try to create a lead from someone who isn't actually on the platform. Now we've got our search, we don't want to be doing this every time we visit Sales Navigator. So at the bottom of the page, click Save Search. Name your search something memorable so you know what's in the search and you can come back to it later. To find them again, click on Save Searches on the right of your search bar and it'll even tell you how many new results have come in since you last checked which is a nice addition. Now you've got a search full of potential leads. It's time to start using this search to generate leads. We're going to create a lead list from our search results. Run through the first page in your search and tick the boxes on the leads you want. At the top of the page below the search bar, click save to list. Select create new list and name your list. As we've refined our search so much, you can tick on the top box and select all from that page and add to your list. Repeat this process on the top few pages and you'll already have a list of 100 plus potential leads. You can find this list at the top of the page under leads. Now you have these leads, decision makers, people who you want as clients, it's time to engage with them. But not a lead if they're not talking to you, right? Click on their name and their profile will appear on the right side of your screen. It'll have a lot of information you'll find on their profile, but to get a full view, click on the arrow next to the close X button on the top right of the profile. At the top of the page, you'll add notes on the profile. So if you've had any communication with them, you can note it down. What they like, favorite sports team, when they're most active. Decision makers are busy over time. They'll get pulled away a lot. So you can use this to summarize your last conversation and you can know where to pick things back up. So how do you start these conversations? I didn't hear you ask. Scroll down to relationship and under recent activity, click on their post and give it a like. If you feel you can contribute something meaningful, comment something as well. It's best to add a comment because you're trying to start a conversation with them. Now, this might be the first time they ever see you. So make sure to keep it light and don't be salesy. Have some people sense with you. Don't engage with something overly personal. And the rule of thumb is, if you wouldn't say it in person, don't say it in a comment. After a couple of interactions on the content, send a connection request with a note that simply says, hi name would be great to connect. Now this doesn't have to win any awards, but a note will get you accepted more than a simple request because it shows you've actually taken the time to write something. The point isn't to pitch throughout this process. You are learning more about them and more importantly, they're learning more about you. It's establishing a relationship that will then turn into a lead. Now this is where the new Sales Navigator feature on the homepage becomes something that you really need to use. Lead and account alerts will make this whole strategy simple to do every day for a fraction of the time that you can do on LinkedIn Basic. These alerts are filled with your leads activity, so when they post you'll be alerted and you can engage with them straight away. This is where buyer intent alerts actually come in really handy for advanced and advanced plus users because they'll be greeted with data such as when the profile lead has viewed your profile or when a lead has publicly engaged with your company's content on LinkedIn. Now, it takes up to 12 touch points to convert, so all that engagement and back and forth communication you're doing is putting your face and services fresh in the decision makers' minds. With Sales Navigator refining your search to the right people and alerting you to when you can contact them and engage with them, you'll have a list of leads to work from every day without fail because they're seeing your face constantly, you're getting fresh in their minds and they're really going to engage with you and basically want your services at the end of it. Thanks for watching. I barely scratched the surface of what you can achieve on Sales Navigator here, but following this method will bring you more consistent leads in the future on the platform. And remember to keep it relational, keep it light, and keep it unsalesy, and you'll get more people coming to you for your services. So if you've got some value on this, please subscribe to the channel and turn on notification bells so you'll get more tips and more strategies directly in your notifications in the future.